Hi guys, well the debut of the new education minister didn't go as well as he had hoped. I call him the House of Commons hooligan, and this is something picked up also by the Speaker of the Chamber, Sir Lindsay Hoyle. Jonathan Gullis is now a minister, which means that he'll have to answer questions from the backbenches and from the opposition. He demonstrated on Monday that he's incapable of that. This man should be nowhere near the levers of power. Have a listen to two exchanges he had. Jeff Smith. Well, Mr. Speaker, that sounds very rosy, but t uh, teacher vacancies are up 240% since 2011. Uh, the latest NEU poll, 44% of England's state school teachers plan to quit by 2027. 22% of them in the next two years. And the, it's particularly difficult for experienced teachers. Uh, those teachers who, who may have 20 years experience are, are leaving the profession. So what steps is the minister taking to, to address pay, stress and an unmanageable workload which is driving the most experienced teachers out of the profession? Yeah. I thank the Honourable Gentleman for that great question, Mr Speaker, because it is about being a teacher that is so important and positive. And it's a shame the Honourable Gentleman used this opportunity to be a bit negative about the profession. Because when we're trying to recruit and retain staff, what we need is people talking up what a great profession it is to work in. I know I'm being shouted at. OK. <laughs> so the question was about trying to retain teachers. That, and the Labour MP talked about, in, and he received information from... Um, the National Union of Teachers, who said, look, we need to retain staff. They're under a massive amount of pressure. Um, they're not being paid enough. We need to make their lives easier for them to be retained. We need to recruit new ones. And the minister's response, I, keep, I find it difficult to call him a minister, but the minister's response here is to attack the question, to attack the person asking the question, not to actually respond to the question. Down by the opposite bench, but not a single year of teaching amongst them all. Yet nine years over here, and I get shouted down for simply being someone who worked on the shop floor. The lessons should be learned from the past. But let me tell the honourable gentleman what it is that we are doing. We're making sure the honourable gentleman is clear. The £30,000 a year starting salary, which is amazingly competitive with the private sector, we're going to have the 181 million. With the private sector? What are you talking about with the private sector? It's not about teachers moving from the public sector into the private sector because the pay isn't good. They're leaving the profession completely. They're deciding it's no longer worth it. I can't take the stress. The pay isn't enough, yes, but I can't take the stress. But, okay, let's continue. Ian, in scholarships and grants, including 29,000, for example, in physics, and we're going to make sure that retention and workload through our workload toolkit, the department has gone, which has so far reduced workload on average by five hours. But the trade union said this is not enough. If this was working, then you would be retaining teachers, and you're not. But let's continue. Mr. Stig Morgan. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Wow. I mean, this government has no ambition for our children's futures. Soaring council schools in deficit, attainment gap at a decade high, and the schools bill ripped up. But, Mr Speaker, recruitment and retention of secondary school teachers, not just Prime Ministers, is in crisis. Yeah. Estimates of DfE data suggest the government is set to fall 34 percentage points below its recruitment target. So can the Minister explain what specific action he is taking to stop the rot and how he will fix his own government's failure on this? Yeah. Mr Speaker, I'm very glad to see the Honourable Gentleman was let out of detention by the Standards Commissioner for his very naughty letter that he sent only recently regarding me. But let me be very clear, Mr Speaker, that the Honourable Gentleman is making a point. I just say, we want better taste in the House. Being a minister, he's no longer on the back benches, so his rhetoric needs to be of a minister. I know he's got that standing and capability. Come on, Minister. Mr Speaker. This is what you're going to expect. This is what you have to expect from Jonathan Gullis. He, he's a backbencher. He's not a minister. He's about sniping from the sidelines. He's not about leading from the front. And notice here, I don't know what this letter was about, but it's irrelevant because he's there to answer questions, not to make comments about the members of the opposition. Um, he thinks he's scoring some sort of goals here scoring brownie points or whatever, but no, it doesn't work like that. You're there to answer questions, not to poke the opposition. Um, 
He should not be a minister. It was a mistake making him a minister. What went through whoever was at Liz Truss, what, what went through Liz Truss's head to make, make this idiot a minister? So I don't know with Liz Truss gone and Rishi Sunak taking over whether he'll still be a minister. I hopefully, I hope it will not be the case. Hopefully he will be out. But this is just a demonstration of what Jonathan Gullis is all about. A bully. A charlatan. A hooligan. That's all. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.